Okay, with this video I'd like to help you understand what is the moon light and that in fact the moon, the sun, the stars are in fact lights. The moon itself is at a height of 32.234 miles high. That's just over 170,000 feet. Now let me explain to you at that altitude, that height above the flat plane of Earth, what you call Earth the dirt, you run into a different atmosphere or con um, concentration of gases. You run into what are called lighter than air gases and one in particular, neon. Neon allows, as you know, things to glow. All right. So this, this is just uh, pictures of the moon light uh, coming into view and as you can tell it's, it's quite bright and what I'm going to do is take a with the next few photos and just blend them in while I tell you some things is just take a long exposure shot which is just allowing as much light into the camera as it can take and then that's going to highlight the sky for you and show you that in fact the illusion the blue illusion can also then be created at night depending on how long you want to leave your your um, your your shutter open okay <clears throat> so then with that in mind you have th this idea of the the moonlight and you can see this if you notice these images you're going to see a splashing on the side of colors red and blue making a purplish all right it's going to be off to the side and what that is is, that, is that's going to be the source of this projection. Now each one of these, the Sun included, has a source of projection. This one in particular is, is I found, I've taken a photograph of and I'm going to show you that in, as soon as I explain a little bit more of the, the mechanics of this to you. So then you have a plane and planes are nothing more than atmosphere changes precisely allowing and disallowing combustion let's say at 172,000 feet where then the O2 is at zero so that then combustion is just out the, out the window so then you look at this idea and you have to understand why is then this thing being projected sometimes to where it looks like you can see clouds behind it and that is is because you're seeing clouds behind it that are farther down the plane for example if you see this rising in the state of Arizona, which is just a, on, on, a, on a map, a, a close distance to the state of California, where I am in particular, someone will see this rise at this level in Arizona and not see it yet in California. It will not be visible in the sky. That then proves to you that this is a lot closer to the ground than you've been told and it's also a projected light as you can see here look to the right side you see that that almost trumpet piece or flute opening that is then from the projector all right and then it's that is at a higher plane projecting that what you see as the so-called moon all right now what I want to do is just go ahead and blend in a few shots and show you this at night and show you that you can then highlight clouds brighten it up, allow more light in, and see more more of the nighttime canopy, what I call it, the, 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 the action behind the action, if you were to zoom in into these photos. What's projecting that then to you is this. This is called Satellite Dave J, being that nobody else wanted to own it. Nobody else even wants to, to tell me that they see it. All right? And I'm, there is one person who has a video up that has uh, helped out and has shown people that this in, is in fact real. All right, you can see it, and as long as you know what you're looking at, and I'm trying to show you here what you're looking at, you will then see this image, which is what you see as the moon, and you will see the projector off to, if, if it's going to be, if you're, if you're in the, uh, in the uh, United States, let's say, it'll be to your right and below. If you're down, um, if you're farther below what's called the equator, and I'll get to that in a minute, you will see it uh, on your other side, your left. Okay. So then, if you then now know that, what I'm going to do is then tell you exactly what's going on here. This is a projection into space, and space being atmosphere above your head. 
All right. And now, why do you see it in a different orientation if you were in, let's say, Australia or something that's uh, said to be below the equator? Well, that is because the projection is at the level of the equator. All right. Does that make sense? Just at the higher plane, just at 30, 32 point, uh, two, three, four miles higher. All right. And then it rotates on its course. All right. So then at that equator, you're going to see what's called uh, with a projection image, you're going to see a rotation change because it's going to be, think of the, the figure eight. All right. And then noticing that on these, every time you look at the so-called moon, you can only look at the one side with the so-called mountains on the left side here in particular, looking from the, the so-called north. That you can zoom in on. The, the so-called the right side, you can never get a clear picture of because it's just a static image. There's nothing there to focus on. Then when you go through what's called the equator, you'll have just a morphing. And then the next thing you know, the moon or the image or what's called the face, then winds up on the other side. But that's only because you're, you're farther down or farther what's called south on the plane from what what would be and I use these in quotes the terms just so you understand north all right because as soon as you leave what is called north every other direction uh, would be going then south if you're looking at all, uh, a long distance uh, type uh, calculation so then looking at this you noticed that this is now, it's in your mind, you can get a, get a handle on it, so you guys down in Australia, you can stop acting like you haven't been told. You're looking at an image in the sky, you're not looking at a rock in space. You need to get your head around that. You need to understand that you're looking around the backside of a projection. All you're doing is seeing the backside of a picture. Imagine holding up a, a picture drawn on the paper to a light, and you're looking at it from the backside. That's all this is. It's not a big mystery. All right. So then these um, these images, the uh, lights per se. This one is being the negative pole, giving out the night light or the um, uh, think the dark light or the negative light, the cooling light. Then is a is a, a, a polar opposite of the sun, which is giving the positive, the the warmth the dry that idea all right so then that's how you get that that symbology and then that actual reality as well all right so you, you know that this is a polar system so the, you're dealing with a you're dealing with polar opposites all right so then if I build the, the so-called 69 system or what's called um, the, the the 68 right because you're falling into the, the nine is the system the nine is the note fallen into all right so then if I add taking a look at what's called like the yellow brick road idea or the projection from the plum or center line that projection is what would then be your daylight at any given point across the the, the flat earth and then the opposite side would then be either twilight um, and or uh, sunrise and or mid night all right and then of course going around the center you'll notice then that below that it would have to be in an, um, that the depth of this of, of what's called the earth would also then have to be a mirror of the ceiling so then you're looking at something in the range of um, you know somewhere uh, more than 32 miles and somewhere less than uh, 37 I'm guessing maybe right at 37 being that the star plane is above the moon and sun plane so then you have to take that into account so if the moon and the sun plane are at 32 miles uh, plus which they are then the star plane is a is a plane above that my, my current estimation is, is by a few miles higher possibly up to making it 37 and then um, you have the idea of what's called gravity and gravity is nothing more than gravity is nothing more than a force the magnetic force being that you're in a polar system of a direct straight line down to the plane of 90 degrees straight down that's what holds everything straight down that's why you have to strain 
if you do anything but stand straight up and down. Standing straight up and down, it's very easy to do. If you slightly bend forward, you're going to want to fall forward. Do you understand? Because that minus 90 degrees is pulling you straight down. All right. So then if you take a look at this, this is going to be the idea of uh, the confusion with these convex and concave people. They're both a lie of the same order. Please take a look. If you make concentric circles, you then color them. Simply rotate it. And you're going to find out that it creates what looks like a concave plate. One that dips, but it doesn't. It's just an optical illusion. Then you reduce that down to fit within this, and I've shown you this, that this is the double X system, the 68 system, the fallen idea, the, the world within the two keys, the fallen notes. All right. Now you understand how to view the world that you see. All right the reality that you see, the lights that you see in the sky. Now that you know how far they are, you can get a better understanding. What you need to do is you need to take your telescope or binoculars, get up there, get them in focus, then lay it flat, look at the, the flat ground, get to where you can see at a good distance, and you will see at 32 miles you are resolved and focused. That's a fact, all right? So this explains that in brief, and I hope that this made some sense. If, if this didn't make sense, I have several videos. Please leave a question, because this takes care of all the liars, like the Stephen Christ liar, and all of those that give you the, the, the ball idea. It's all, it's two versions of the same thing. Don't fall for either. You live on a flat plane within a system, all right? That's it. All right, so then I know that there's a lot of antichrists out there currently who are trying to tell you one thing and, and maybe steer you away from, from the, the whole truth. This is nothing but a fact, okay? This is the way it is. You know, go out and verify it yourself. You'll find out it's true. Then after that, ask yourself what comes after that, all right? That, that's something you'll have to ask yourself, all right? So then, uh, as I say, be free in Christ and free indeed. True living water, baby. All right, talk to you soon. Cheers. Hello again. This is part two of the projector series. Okay, this is now a different projector that you see in the... Right over here. Right here. This projector right here. Somewhere right around there. It's projecting that. Do you see that? That's what it's projecting. That's what you see is Jupiter. Right? Jupiter's just a projection as well. Sorry, man. Anyways, let me show you that in relationship. I know people like flipping their wigs, literally. People have literally thrown their wigs out the window right now. There's the moon. And you can actually tell, kind of with your eye, that Jupiter literally sits closer to you <laughs> within the atmosphere than, than the fake moon projection even and then the fake moon projection is once again more yellow okay so I hope all the anger has passed the way that you can tell that Jupiter this being projected as Jupiter from this projector you can tell by this this is very excited lots of colors so I'd be wondering if they're claiming there's a storm going on here I haven't looked into that. Just a thought. In relationship to that, how you can actually just see with your eye, as I zoom in to the Jupiter projection, how you can see it's actually physically closer to you within the atmosphere. So you're actually, if you're an astronomer, man, you're just quite literally focusing on like a picture, dude. Sorry to bust your bubble. Sorry to bust your bubble, man. That's a flippin'. Sorry to bust your bubble, it's right man. There, man. That's a flippin'. Sorry to bust it's your right bubble, there, man. man. That's a flippin'. Sorry to bust right your there, bubble, man. man. That's a flippin'. It's right there, man. I have a Sony handy cam. I shouldn't be able to see the planets, dude. You can actually physically see with your eyes, man. 
it's sitting lower in what I call the thermosphere than at the actual so-called moon projection, which because it's much bigger, so therefore this would have to be lower so it'd be seen for the whole effing effect to take effect. Now let's go look at the projector so you can see it. Stop clowning around. And all the other so-called planets have them too. You just have to look. So this will be Dave J2, the Jupiter projector.